So here we are with a flip phone that will give the Samsung Flip 4 something to worry about. So let's check it out. What's up guys, welcome back to Michael's Tech Talk. So here I have the Oppo Find N2 Flip. This is Oppo's version of the clamshell flip phone. And yeah, this is going to give Samsung a run for its money with their Z Flip 4. Z, Z4 Flip. Flip 4, Z Flip. This will give the Samsung Z Flip 4 a run for its money. So let's check this out. The The unboxing was pretty cool. The, the box is really, really funky and it comes really well loaded. You've obviously got the phone and then inside you have a 67 watt charger brick in the box, which is pretty fantastic. USB-C cable. You also get a, a clear case with the phone as well which I will be honest is really well needed because the glossy finish on this phone is slippery as heck so yeah you definitely need to put that case on and it's a really funky box you know it's all cardboard and when you open it up it sort of hinges open and all like this it's really funky I really like it this is now on global release this comes in two colors it comes in this moonlit purple and it comes in a black color as well so yeah, like this, this is like a pearlescent purple and it's quite nice. I'll be truthfully honest. It's it's a nice color. First impressions, this phone is very similar in design to the Samsung Z Flip 4. There's a couple of notable improvements to the design. First off will be Oppo's Flexian hinge, which I must say is pretty good. Uh, it's, it's not stiff or, you know, f doesn't feel flimsy. It, feels really really good and when the phone is folded over it is like com it is completely flat there's no gap in the middle as you can see here so the two bits are just flat which i think is pretty good next up is the crease or the lack thereof the crease in the in the center of this display yes you can still feel there is a crease there but it is definitely not as noticeable as it is on the samsung flip quite surprised but and again that goes in tandem with the hinge the different design in the hinge allows for a smaller crease, which is less noticeable here. So yeah, when the screen is off, you can you can see it there. You know, if you shine a light on it, you can see it. But when the screen is on, it is very very hard to make it out. You know, so top knob is doable for that. It's uh, it's definitely a good improvement. So let's do a quick spec overview. So when it's open, we have a 6.8 inch foldable AMOLED display. Runs 120 hertz refresh rate with up to 1600 nits of peak brightness. It's a good crisp display, no complaints there. The cover display is a 3.26 inch display, which is the biggest front cover display on a flip phone yet. And yeah, it's pretty decent, but we'll talk about it a bit later. This is housing the MediaTek Dimensa A9000 Plus series chipset. And it's no slouch. I mean, this was a flagship chip in some of the Xiaomi phones last year, and it's pretty decent it's punchy it's snappy and no complaints uh this is the 256 gig model with the 8 gig of ram there is all other versions of this which come with 12 gig of ram but this is the standard base model 256 gig 8 gig of ram uh it comes with 44 watt fast wired charging which is pretty awesome and we have a 4300 milliamp hour battery which is phenomenal that they've got that size of a battery in this form factor that's pretty amazing. Cameras, so in the rear we have a 50 megapixel main sensor and an 8 megapixel ultra wide. And then on the inside we have a 32 megapixel selfie camera as well. So yeah, cameras, not too shabby. But we'll talk about them a bit later. Let's just talk quickly about the features. The hinge on this phone is, is really good. Oppo have made a big deal out of explaining this Flexion hinge, you know, and, and how it works and how many times they've tested it and, you know, hundreds of thousands of folds, you know, you'll get out of this hinge, you know, is pretty incredible. No gap in between the two halves of the phone either is a nice touch as well. That was something that always kind of bothered me with the Samsungs was that when the phone was closed, you had this sort of gap up here. You don't get that with this, it's completely flat and I, I like that. So the cover display is great. You can customize it with different clock faces, different widgets. You can get your notifications on it. You can quick reply to text messages. You can swipe through. You can use the controls for the camera to use those rear cameras. I kind of thought it 
first I would mind the, the the sort of the shape and the style of it but after using it I actually got pretty used to it and I really do like it. Fingerprint reader is in the power button as well so it's a solid uh, it's a solid button sensor uh, which is it's okay yeah it's there's no complaints no in display fingerprint reader um, but it is in the power button. This is housing Android 13 with color OS as well so this is a color OS is a nice clean skin over Android 13 and I personally do like it it's very reminiscent of Pixel OS so if you do like the Pixel vibes that you'll get from Android 13 you'll like color OS. Stereo speakers are pretty badass on this as well so here is what they sound like. Let's flip the script and if you if you like this video and if you're finding this video useful, smash that like button for me. And if you haven't already, why don't you click that subscribe button and ring the little bell to be notified of new videos just like this one. Go for it. It's free. Who doesn't love free stuff? Here is some samples from the cameras, a mixture of pictures, portrait mode, video. So enjoy. So this is the 4K video on the rear camera of the Oppo Find N2 Flip. Let me know what you think of the video down below. Is it good? Is it bad? Let me know. This is the video on the front facing camera on the Oppo Find N2 Flip. So let me know what you think of the quality. This is only 1080p. There's no 4K video on the front facing camera. So let me know down below. So let's talk pros and cons of this phone. So we'll start with the pros. Uh, first off, the design. I think this design is pretty cool. It's sleek, it's minimalistic, and it is pretty slim as well. And to think that in this size, you're getting one of the biggest displays on a smartphone when it's open, which is pretty phenomenal. And you're getting a 4300 milliamp hour battery inside this form factor. That's an unbelievable achievement. The cover display is, is really good. I do like it. I like the functionality of it. Top marks for the design. The display. The colors, bright, vibrant. It's 120 hertz refresh rate, so it's smooth, it's silky. And I'll be honest, I haven't had much in the way of lag or anything like that with it. It's a real, real good display. And then that segues into the cover display. Cover display is really useful. I did always like the cover display on the Samsung Flips. I like the functionality of being able to access the camera and see your notifications. And the fact that this is bigger is so, is so great. You know, you get your clock widgets there, you'll get your, you know, your camera functions, you just swipe across, you'll get your weather widgets, things like that there. I really do like the functionality and I'm intrigued to see where it will go with this because there's so much potential with this front display. The sky's the limit. What I love about this as well, see because this is a flip phone, when you open this up, you have a fully functioning normal phone. There's no compromise with this phone whatsoever. Unlike some of the folds, which I have stressed many a time, there's issues with optimization for apps. You know, when you get apps that are just blew up, that's not a good experience for me. If you have a, a, an app that's written solely for a device that is properly optimized so that you can get the best experience possible from that display, that is what is really good and that's what really appeals to me. That's what you get with a flip phone. With a clamshell flip phone, you don't get any compromise. When you open up that phone, it's a normal functioning phone. And I love that. The caveat with that is you just fold it over, stick it in your pocket, takes up no space. It's great. The battery life. How this phone has a 4300 milliamp hour battery baffles me. 4300 milliamps, it's much bigger than the Samsung Flip and I don't know how they've done it. It's phenomenal. I mean, a 4300 milliamp hour battery, that's what's in an iPhone Pro Max. You know, that that's crazy. This is really good. The battery life has really impressed me with this. You can get a, you can get a full day's charge out of this phone with very, very little effort. And yeah, top marks, top, top marks. Because again, that was that was a thing which I didn't really like about the Samsungs. You couldn't have got a day out of it. So top marks. I do have some cons for this phone. So let's get into them. While you do get 44 watt wired fast charging with this phone, it's disappointing that there's no wireless charging. Um, simply, purely from a convenience point of view, 
me personally, I'm a big fan of wireless charging and I use it on a lot of different devices. And see, just being able to set something down on a wireless charging pad or, you know, on a stand or whatever, that is, it's disappointing that, you know, I've, there has been some instances where I've set this down to charge it. Came back about half an hour later and went, oh yeah, that doesn't have wireless charging. So I've had to go and plug it in and it's been a whole palava. So yeah. I would like to see where it's started. There's no official IP rating with this, so you know, you can't drop it in the sink or drop it in the bath or wherever you take your phone where there's water. Don't get me wrong, if you're out in the rain and you take a phone call, I, you know, it's not gonna sizzle and turn into a pile of smoke. But you know, with a lot of phones out there having, you know, even even IPX4 ratings, you know, it, it would be nice to have an official rating on this. So yeah. The cover screen, while I really do like the cover screen and it is really, really useful for selfies and, you know, using the, you know, if you're taking selfies or if you're taking videos with those rear cameras, it's really useful for that. I kind of feel there's a little bit of a missed opportunity here to have more apps support this display, more social media apps, not just notifications, but, you know, other uh, apps and widgets. I think there's a lot of potential for this, but there just seems to be a lack of you know third party apps for this so i really hope this is something that app developers will push on and try and make better for this because i think it's got great potential but as of now outside of the functions that i briefly shown you that's really about it saying that the camera is the most useful thing the rear camera can only support 4k video up to 30 frames per second and if you want 60 frames per second the video drops down to 1080p so I would have liked a little bit more spec in the cameras, which then leads on to my last con. It's the selfie camera. Now, it's not really a fault of this phone per se. It's the selfie camera on foldables overall. I think it's an absolute waste of time, if I'm being honest. 32 megapixel camera in the front of this display. When are you ever going to use it? You've got 50 megapixels on the back and you've got a display that you can use to take your photographs. Why would you use the inside camera? It doesn't make any sense to me and then obviously yes we've got the hole punch camera on the inside of the display but you know when you're watching content not that it's a big issue because let's be honest i use an iphone and i've got a dopey dynamic island sounds like a boy band i've got dynamic island which is more obtrusive than anything out there, anything else out there i personally don't think i would use a selfie camera on this phone because i've got a much better camera on the back and with the ultra wide camera only being 8 megapixel I would have liked to have seen a better ultra wide camera on the back rather than a 32 megapixel camera on the, on the inside which let's be honest I probably wouldn't use that's my pros and cons guys what do you guys that's my pros and cons what do you think let me know in the comments down below have you got one of these are you thinking of getting one have you any questions hit me up in the comments down below I'll answer any questions you have 100% honestly so just hit me up down below so there we go guys, that's my experience with the Oppo Find N2 Flip. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button guys. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and ring that little bell to be notified of new videos just like this one. So that's all from me guys. But if you want more down to earth tech review videos and accessory videos, you know where to come. Hit up Michael's Tech Talk. And until the next one, I'll catch you later.